Well, anyway, thank you for having me at uh, such a beautiful space, um, which I had no part in architecting. I'm looking at the architect. Um, but which makes me feel as if I did, which is uh, often the goal of great architecture to, well, I feel at home in a place um, because the place has been architected to be uh, a memory. So uh, this is something I do in my classes, this little thing. Um, but we'll see how it goes with adults. <laughs> um, uh, but when, my first memory, my earliest memory, um, is very, t very tight. I see my self reaching up to my dad at first, and then this is dad and me. Art, many artists in the house, so <laughs> apologies. Um, and then I, I close in tighter and I realize my dad is actually grabbing my forearm and lifting me off the ground. And um, this is an interesting memory because grabbing by the forearm, you know, is a hasty thing. And, um, and if I think about the picture more, I can fill it in. Uh, this is what I initially see. I just see that moment suspended. And uh, when I fill it in, though, I see there's a puddle here. He's picking me up over the puddle. I see a freeway way over here. And I think, why am I seeing a freeway? And I realize we're at this dry cleaners. And uh, this is neon saying dry cleaning. <laughs> and, um, and I realized my dad was rushing into the dry cleaners uh, and lifting me over this puddle to get me to get me in and it, because I then see it's raining. And over here, because I see the highway, I see the water tower of the Detroit Zoo. And um, this picture, the more I think about it, fills in a lot of details uh, for what people would call my history. And And, but I think what my history is, is the imagery that I remember. I remember the images, and the images make me feel, and from what I feel, I then have thoughts. So, <laughs> when I have a house, this is my floor plan of a house, um, there are rooms, there's like a hallway or something, there are rooms, sorry, Byron, uh, <laughs> but this is the floor plan of, of, of a house, my house, and I remember what happened in the rooms, and I remember walking between the rooms, And when I see my uh, home, and I see myself moving from room to room, uh, I see things happening. Um, I remember uh, in one room, something happened as a boy. And, and then later, as a, in the same house, as a young man. And, between boyhood and manhood, um, many things happened and those pathways are connected. And those memories of myself are connected. And this is from Wood Smoke. And I'm going to do this back and forth for about 25 minutes or so. But in this perfect silence, when a chair scrapes the hardwood flooring in another room, he feels the vibrations 
and imagines two people making love. Over time, there will be birthdays and anniversaries, coffee percolating before each, sheet cake sliced toward the end. Dark night will descend on the home like a dome of velvet dropped over a cage. This is how we begin as vibration silhouetted by vibration. This is the artistic impulse. Normally, when I write about uh, the house, which I do often uh, in, in my writing, uh, I think of the rooms inside. Uh, I think not from the outside seeing in, but from the inside, seeing house from the inside, looking out from the inside where things touched me. I see at six years old um, the violence taking place in this room and in this room. And I see that and then I feel. And from feeling I get thought. What was it like to be six years old, somebody asks me. And I can only answer by saying, I see something happening. And then I feel something. And from that feeling, I, I put words to it to tell you what it was like to be six years old. <coughs> With, without the image whose voice is feeling, there is no thought. Um, if I'm blind, the, the image is replaced by senses, other senses. The images, though, uh, also uh, of what happened don't leave us. Uh, if I walk into this house decades later, I still see what happened here and here and here. And you can, um, these are my little cheat notes, so I remember. To get my, you know, I, I'll, I'll ramble a lot like I'm doing right now. Um, uh, I forgot where I was. If, if you, you can even tear down the house. You can break down the walls and lug it away. And I can still walk to that bare spot of land, and I, I know where my house is. Um, I know where each room was. And I remember what happened in those rooms. Uh, even though I'm now standing on bare dirt, the house, which is a memory, is still the image, which is thought. Um, I can still say, here, here, and here, this happened. So the home becomes a blank space, but everything is still there. I still see it. Uh, and this is why we are haunted. When you make poetry, uh, you are speaking from the haunted place that was that room, or that house, or other construction. Uh, if we write a, a poem about a cherry tree, standing out here. We are writing about the cherry tree from within the room, looking out at the cherry tree. When we were children. You, it's the same looking in from the outside. The cherry tree can look in on us. And I'll leave that there, a little odd thing to Think about for a second. The shutters held back wind and rain. While he slept, the shutters rattled. On long walks beneath cloudy skies, the shutters blocked out candlelight. At night and from a thousand yards, you couldn't see the home. When moonlight arced from 11 to 4, the shutters looked like entryways to caves leading downward through a loam of questions. In hot daylight, bees nuzzle into a honeycomb of broken stucco and chicken wire beneath the eave. At 8 o'clock, there will be shade. At 10 o'clock, darkness. At 7 o'clock, daylight again. A whole summer passing. 
In autumn, the leaves will crisp and fall, pile themselves into swells on the lawn. In January, mattresses of snow will firm against the roof line. Come spring, the box elders will throw off their blankets, rising like bears to be fattened again after the long months of pretending to be something they aren't. He could see in 360 degrees what no one could speak of. Where two walls formed a corner, that was called dimension. But from corner to corner, there were twinkle lights strung, and beneath those lights, nobody danced or sang. When he stepped onto the lawn at deep night, he felt dizzy with forsythia and moisture, the belt of Orion getting tighter, the sky each year closing faster, the oar stroke of cupboards inside the home opening and closing, the cry of a child from a neighboring property causing him to startle. This is from a book called The Timeless Way of Building. little paper things here. This picture of the, um, this one here. I see this picture and I remember everything. I was never there, but when I see this, it feels perfect to me for a reason because I remember being the boy beside the girl on the dock on the, the lake. And I, I, I remember all the details of that spot in Pennsylvania. And I remember being the young man beside the young lady on the dock on the lake in a little lake town called Brooklyn, Michigan, or right outside of there. And I see it all because this memory is my memory. I see this more, a little more complicated and I remember everything too, the pots and the roots and such. And especially this here. I remember her. She tells you everything without saying anything. And so you fall in love with her. And there's something perfect about this picture of her that everybody understands. It's this timeless thing that feels, and I'm speaking of her, <laughs> her, not him, her, or, or they, her, <laughs> her, her. Um, she is the visualization of the haunting that is inside. When we build a place, we are architecting a construction for a thing to happen inside of. And those things become the haunting that becomes art. And we look at that picture of her and we feel the haunting that was room that becomes image, that becomes feeling, that becomes art. Or if you're Too much like me you fall in love with her or something it's different than art but um, I wrote I wrote about a, a woman that I thought was dead in my book the kill jar and she got a hold of me and said why did you write about me like that she's now like 75 I wrote about the picture I saw of her when she was a rookie cop she's probably 25 and I wrote a 50 years later, she 
found me on Facebook and said, I'm alive, and I, why, <laughs> why, why did you describe me like that? Um, I have fallen for her the way I, you fall for that, this woman. Um, so this haunting thing that I talk about, the true haunting is organic. It cannot be forced because it is already one thing, the memory of this place. All of the things that happened within that box, within those rooms, exists as my memory. It is organic. I cannot force new memory onto something that doesn't have it to begin with. It is perfection by itself, like the pictures I show. And the poet's job is to simply allow those memories to be. I should say one of the poet's jobs. One of the walls served no purpose at all but to be supportive. This was the wall that everybody leaned on, even the mice inside it who, home from a long night in the field, found it a useful headboard. Too tired to take off their boots, they slept like men on trains. As the mice slipped off into dream, a real men awoke and began their days. Inside the home, the wall was warmed by body heat radiating off passers-by. Every New Year's Eve, two people kissed against the wall, but by February, one of them would cry against it. In the eaves outside, mud daubers built their nests from saliva and clay, one egg per cell, one cell per funnel. Sometimes the home felt this way on the inside, too. One frame per room, one mattress per frame, one funnel of breath on colder mornings. Brick and wood and bolts held them in. From an aerial view, each August, there were four wasps circling the house like runners on a track. In the poem, we are tapping into the haunting, uh, which is what we saw, which made us feel, which gave us idea, I've said. A single poem is the haunted singular. The collection of poems, like wood smoke, is the home whose rooms must relate and the paths between them must be organic as if they had always been only that way between them. When we attempt to write a poem from the outside in, we are constrained. When we write from the inside out, we are children again. And from this book, again, briefly, I love this little story that happens here. It's from the great film Ikiru, To Live, describing the life of an old man. He sat for 30 years behind a counter, preventing things from happening. And then he finds out that he is to die of cancer of the stomach in six months. He tries to live. He seeks enjoyment. It doesn't amount to much. And finally, against all obstacles, he helps to make a park in a dirty slum of Tokyo. He has lost his fear because he knows that he is going to die. He works and works and works. There is no stopping him because he is no longer afraid of anyone or anything. He has no longer anything to lose, and so in this short time gains everything, and then dies in the snow, swinging on a child's swing in the park which he has made, and singing. In the singular poem, we are trying for the organic image and it already exists. And we are trying for this in the collection too, to link those images, but they already exist. The man who resists movement learns that he'll die and finds the center of the haunting, which is his childhood again.
in the collection, I said, the rooms must be linked. On the northern slope, the foothills spun clockwise on their axis, and the house was like a top spinning counterclockwise in the valley. Nearby, there were fruit trees. Underfoot was the grass, then soil, then stones allowing drainage. Where did things lead after that, he wondered. When, for balance, he held his flattened palm to the shed, he imagined he felt the sea, a body of water like silk breezing away from him. When he looked at his open palm, he could see the lines in it. And on his forearm, the skin was taut enough that he could still see his veins. Although at high noon each day, the sun was an ember so golden that all these years later, he still couldn't look at it. The sun was an ember so golden that all these years later, he still couldn't look at it. He held his flattened palm to the shed. He imagined he felt the sea, a body of water like silk breezing away from him. They're the same. They're different, but they're still haunted by the same thing, the same place that he returns to. When we write poorly, we, which anybody who's a writer does, <laughs> uh, we, we start with idea and we work backward, which is failing behavior as an artist, if you ask me. Uh, in contrast, what did you see which made you feel, which provoked the idea? When we are making things difficult for ourselves, we think we are bright. And we sit down to say something. But there is no saying from the outside in. We start with the idea and we fail. We start with the image and it leads us to the idea. This timber was not brought here by train, but the pressed ear along the track from room to room still hears an approach. What is coming toward us now? And beneath the joists, there are small stones and fading coins to be found. A red tin can that became the toy soldier's coffin and a fist-sized conch still audible with the seashore it departed a century ago. The wallpaper is a tapestry of industrial ink, rubber cement, and vegetable oil from 75 years of fried potatoes on Sunday morning. All summer long, for three generations, a boy's rubber ball bounces against the reveal of plaster from boredom. In manhood, the boy paints the ball, but not the sound it made its metronome too close to the cadence of death. Everything I see now is a memory of something else. Um, and if I truly see a new figure that has never crossed my vision, I see it only by remembering other things that have. I, so I've been working out, and uh, <laughs> uh, so we, we can do this here, simply. Um, his shirt sleeves were tight around 25 years of going to the gym down the lone road 
that passed the pond that was dappled by water birds each morning and whose banks his children ran upon a decade ago while he followed behind saying words like, not too fast and stop. So everything that we do and think and say uh, is just a memory of something else, re, retooled. Um, I say I've been working out, and I think of my children 10 years ago. And we all do that constantly, and that place is where we make uh, poems from. That's what I got for you. <laughs> We have time for questions. I think that went a half hour or so. Um, if there are any questions, like why am I talking about this, which I forgot to introduce, it, it is because uh, when Troy Passy and I worked on this book, I know that it was mentioned, but uh, we were asked to make things with no real direction. Um, and uh, for me, I could not immerse as a writer and think to write uh, like um, about the, the James Castle house from the outside that like in a way that uh, tourists might, would appreciate. Um, like this is, it's not a historical thing for me. It's a, uh, I mean, it's not the typical historical thing for me. The historical thing for me is was immersing in the rooms and just imagining Castle uh, here, living a life. I frankly, I love his art; it's great, but I don't know shit about it. You know, like I, you, there are historians that really know things, right? I don't. I like it. I think it's really nice. Um, I I love his the mythology of James Castle, and I love the truth of Castle and such. It's, they're great stories associated with him. But I couldn't write about that. That is the opposite of what I, I just said. I couldn't sit down with idea and hope to say things uh, of gravity. So I just remembered my house, which is Castle's house, which is your house, which is, you know, um, what happened in my rooms happened in his, no doubt, with sh shades different, but um, so that's what that was all about. If there are questions, I'll um, take some. Hi. The sure. emotion to drive mm -hmm. the, no, the sight to drive the emotion to drive the thought. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, and we're speaking in the context of poetry, but as a writer um, in the broader sense of the world, word, do you see that process also applying to things like problem writing or essays? Because oftentimes working writers, we have to start with an idea and sort of circumnavigate, work backwards to that emotion. Yeah, so the question was, I'm repeating it for the internet, even though all of you probably heard it. Uh, the question was, I spoke about uh, image leading to uh, feeling leading to idea, and the, 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 the and, and poem, poem coming from that. Uh, and your, the question was, do I see that in other genres of writing as well? fiction or nonfiction or et cetera. Um, you know, I do. Uh, I, I think that we, we use phrases like, um, she was so descriptive when we, when we like a novel or something. Like, um, I'm pretending I was my mom right now. <laughs> and, um, um, and, but I think, I think what she's saying is, those descriptions made her feel something, and those feelings 
made her s say, I like that book. And to, to people who are not like practicing artists dealing with this sort of meta thought thing all the time, that's kind of her way of saying, um, her, or she intellectually appreciates it um, or something. And so I think so. Um, but of course, you have like there. You know, I have to. For me, I have to. I would have to clarify or say there, there's probably a caveat. Hopefully, there's a caveat um, in like uh, the reporting of news and things like that, um, where it's just information intake uh, is what's important. Um, facts, right? But um, but of course, even the great journalists, you know, if you look back at their writing. Uh, uh, it's it's full of deep imagery that I say deep imagery. I don't mean heavy. I mean um, at the core internal imagery that makes you cry or crack up or whatever. You know, I don't I don't mean deep like that was deep. You know, I mean complicated imagery that feels like a memory you of your own. question was uh, m my uh, memoir, The Kill Jar, and this poetry book, Wood Smoke, are different. And how do I um, apply this thing that we talked about to The Kill Jar as well? To both of them. To both of them. Different. How's it different? I really don't think it's different. And, and in fact, I, for me, and I, I think um, a lot of you know, the, the kill jar gets, uh, I looked at Amazon reviews, uh, and it's, 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 it's very frustrating, um, but also it's great. Uh, I'm not going to do it more than once every few months, um, but, even, but I think there's going to be a point where I'm like, I have to stop. Um, because it is, it is sometimes, you know, like there are many, it's at four out of five stars right now, which is great for Amazon. Um, uh, and um, uh, there are people who understand what I was doing, and then there are others that are like, it, it's a true crime memoir where I talk about this murder case and I talk about my immersion into that case and things like that. I talk about my experience with the case as much as the case. And um, there are some people who say things like, this guy's off the rails. What is he, you know, because I'm immersing the same way I would. Um, and and they just wanted to know the details of the case, and so it's not a true crime book. Um, I'm I'm, ca I'm ca cautious to always throw in the memoir part when I talk about it. Although the the publisher pitched it as true crime to sell more copies, probably, um, uh, which is good. I, um, but um, I don't think it's different. I only experience that way. I'm not super smart, um, and so I can't tackle. I'm smart enough to know that I'm not among the smartest, you know? And um, they say, like, if you're real dumb, you don't know you're dumb because you're dumb, right? <laughs> so, like, I'm, and that, I mean, I'm not making fun. That's, I think that's how it works, you know? Um, and I'm smart enough, just smart enough to know that I'm not the best guy to go from the outside in. I'm not um, somebody who can attempt to do that. Um, I don't have those analytical skills. Um, I don't think anything before I feel it. And um, that's been tough in the workplace, <laughs> uh, but been uh, rewarding in other places. Um, I, I'm told I'm very emotionally intelligent. So, um, uh, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we talked about art coming from the heart first, and I wanted to to talk more about that. What is the heart of the thing? Yeah. 
Sure, because I do kind of just drop it in there a few times. Um, she wanted to know uh, for the internet. I talked about art, art being coming from the haunted place. What is the haunted place? And um, you know, I guess I'm a little bit um, new agey when it comes to this, but I do feel like uh, we're the same thing. Just kind of, you know, like from a um, physics standpoint, we're all the same energy or whatever, you know, I kind of, clearly we're different, you know, standing here, um, but I do feel like um, we share something that none of us is smart enough to understand, but many of us acknowledge um, because we felt this connectivity in moments. And um, um, I feel like the haunted place is that shared experience, that um, it's like constant deja vu or something, um, like everything just already is or something. And when I write um, and I try to come from the outside, I am, am uh, being a denier of that. But if I allow myself to go into, you know, deja vu feels like a haunting, like a ghost, like something just spooked your soul or something. That's what I'm talking about, that I go into that space. Um, it's, you know, like you could have a million poets up here saying, that guy's high as shit. Or, or someone would say that and someone would say, oh, I totally understand what you're saying, you know. Because um, uh, I do it too, or um, but I, and and it's like it's not like I'm Nietzsche or something. I'm you know I'm writing about cupboards and stuff, so I'm not trying to say I'm not trying to claim sort of some grandiose vision as a writer or something. But I just know that that's where whatever images occur to me come from, and sometimes I think they're really beautiful, and I could never have done that from the outside. The, the, that, that line I read uh, toward the I love it, I don't care, like it's the or, uh, the, the or stroke of cupboards opening and closing, that's awesome. Like, I'm not saying everything I write is like that, but I love that line. I couldn't do that from the outside in. That's the shit that just happens when you, it's like maybe other people would just call it meditation, I don't know, right? Dreams, stuff happens in dreams where you're just like, that was crazy. Like that, you, you can't think that into being, you know? And so that haunted place, I think, is what I'm, is s similar to those other things. But, but there were a couple, um, you had Yeah, what was the collaboration with Troy Patsy like? Did you guys come to the house at the same time? Like what kind of things did you guys talk about if you talk? Well, tr we are both kind of goofy and Troy is kind of a recluse and and we went to the house a couple times together for like a half hour. Um, sometimes I, and when we were there, I was just like, I'm gonna sit over here. And I would just sit down. <laughs> and I, we wouldn't talk to him really. And then we met with Rachel and Kristen and um, um, a, a, a couple other people a couple times. We just kind of had conversations. I, I, you know, I, uh, Rachel Riker, um, oh, the question was, what was the collaboration with Troy Passy like, sorry. And um, the artist who, who um, filled this book with great stuff. Um, uh, I had many conversations with Rachel Riker, who headed up this project with Karen and all the Boise City people, whatever. And uh, all the people who, uh, what, I don't know what you call that, uh, made the house, <laughs> Re remade the house, or preserved the house. Um, I don't know. Um, it was weird, man. We just sat around. <laughs> that, and then, and then, um, and then we went off into our own space. And I wrote. It started with me writing and sending things I was working on to Troy. And then Troy would. We did this twice, I think. Came back and said, "Hey, I got some of these things that I did based on what you were writing." And we then we then we would look at it. But it wasn't like we worked together or something. Um, it was very separate. After we met a couple of times, um, and and and, uh, and then we we had each of us had more work than 
was going to fit in the book, and we, we as a group of people beyond just us, we called, we kind of pulled out some pieces and we laid it out together and figured out how, you know. In a sense, anybody who's edited a book or a journal, or even, even a brief journal or something, you know, um, tries to do this house thing, you know. Architecting the perfect, you know, room. Uh, there's like, there's an interplay between poems and pictures and how does one feel after the other versus before and um, if, you know, if I were to suddenly build on to this house right here, that's like a dead zone. Like, there's no life in that. That's something that, if I, I mean, if I were to come 40 years later and throw a patio out there, there's no history in that. And you know that when you walk into the house. Oh, was this an add-on? That's how you know. And that's, we, we tried to make that um, not happen with the book. So the most collaborative we got was toward the end, trying to figure out what would go where to make it feel right. But, and, and there was a question in the back, too. Yeah, go back to haunting. Um, the memoir is very dark. Serial killer children, for those of you who don't know. And uh, you're threaded into it, and there's violence in your home, and you're describing this house. Uh, I guess I'm asking uh, about the image and the feeling and the thought, and whether you, in writing this kind of dark work, and tell me if I'm mis if I'm missing that completely. Um, gone through that unearthing all that stuff you did with the police records and the interviews and the places and the you know, reliving your childhood and all that. How did it change you, I guess is my question, or did it? Well, the question is um, in shor yeah. a shorter version, shorter version, I'll do what the, we, you see someone interpreting, you know, <laughs> and the guy goes on for five minutes and the interpreter says, are you hungry? You know, <laughs> uh, I'll do. I'll do that. Um, the, the, the question is, um, after writing The Kill Jar, which was a very dark book full of haunt, dark memories and sordid details of child killings and things and intertwined with my own childhood trauma or violence or whatever you would call it, um, after having been through that process, uh, uh, writing that all out, um, have I been changed? Have some, but specifically, have those feelings that come from image been altered, yeah. I think is what you're asking. And um, I think no. I think that the, the in time, I have, over time, I have discovered other images that have other feelings associated with them. So, if I go back to this picture, the Detroit Zoo, and, and my father lifting me over the puddle um, and going into the dry cleaners, and over here is the freeway. I actually, and I see headlights actually in this picture uh, because it's raining, and I realize, oh, it must be uh, um, getting to be evening. And, and I realize also it must be, I, I, I realize, I, I don't, in this instance, I see the headlights, and I say, oh, then I see dark. But I don't know if I really see dark. The headlights are on because it's getting dark. And, um, but anyway, here's the zoo. And beyond the zoo is my like, uh, grandmother's house. She had, uh, this is, uh, I've spoken of her to somebody else, um, Rhea. She had red hair and blue eyes and was in a wheelchair and had no legs. And uh, I'd call her from college, and I'd say, how's it going? And she'd say, what do you mean, how's it going? I got no legs. <laughs> um, and, uh, 
And I, when writing the kill jar, I wasn't focused on those things. But if you look long enough, you see the other things too. And those things kind of counterbalance. If there's a, if there's a barometer or whatever uh, for sadness and one for happiness and one for you know, whatever, like these images interplay and they change the, I don't know if barometer is the right word. I, I said I wasn't super bright. The, the, it, you know, the, if there's a gauge of some sort, um, they interplay. And so I don't, the, the, the feelings I had don't change about from the house, that or that or that. that I, but I have other ones. Of light, if they use a different metaphor, is the spectrum of light as you think of it, if you can do that, has that altered at all? Do you, because you have the memory of your red-headed, blue-eyed, legless grandmother, like is that, like, that you dredge that? Are you better for it? I guess I'm, I'm asking, we're neighbors. <laughs> I, read, I, read this, I read this book and I thought I was in it when he was in the street with a knife ready to kill me, but it was a different person thinking of killing and he didn't kill anybody, but, so I, I'm like, I, I'll answer I your want, question. I want you to, I want you to be uh, like a little bit lighter about the world, having been through that experience. I guess that's right. There, there's so this is a different question. This is the uh, the question is like, am I am I lighter? Yeah. Am I happy to have gone through that dark experience? Am I somehow? I think what what I mean for those uh, m many people here haven't read read the book or don't know what we're talking about at all, probably. So I'll just s sort of be short about it, which is that. Um, I, th I think that uh, the experience of sharing uh, uh, has been helpful. That has uh, <coughs> lightened things. The way any artist puts, you know, puts their stuff on the wall, th they would like somebody to walk past that wall. And it has been lightening because people have walked past the wall. Um, you know, I've gotten hundreds of Facebook messages. Um, when I put a website up, I got within a couple of days um, of this TV thing that, that happened related to the book. Um, within a couple of days, I had like 120 emails. People who had watched the TV show found me online and whatever, like, and share their experiences with me. Um, I had not expected that. And this is sometimes heavy and also, though, very light. And so I don't know if I'm any better or worse for having written all that dark stuff out that you're talking about. But um, I do know that uh, that connectivity thing that we talked about, it felt like, in an odd way, um, that was a part of the process, too the connection with those people. And they, them having read the book, you know, they weren't writers, they're just people who had this experience that they saw reflected in what I had written, which is what I'm talking about. <coughs> this shared haunting that we pull from, that already exists, that can't be, full, that, you know, and as writers or artists of any kind, you're, you're in theory, you're, you're not just giving voice to yourself, but to others, you know, and um, we see that. We like James Castle because we understand intuitively that, that this, we, the, the space we intuit is, is within us already. You look at his work and you just, it enters you because it's like a puzzle, it's like, it's like, it's like your heart or your chest is, is the missing puzzle piece on a board, and the art is the piece, and it fits right in. You know? That's how you feel when you look at James. It's not super complicated compared to what we think of as intellectual art or something like that. You know, if we look at artistic movements, we're about, we're, which were about outside in uh, meta statements and such or something. Um, this just feels like walking out into spring air or something, right? And we, I mean, I know that there are other artists whose job it is to shake up that. And I think all artists probably at some point 
work in that mode to disturb. Um, I, I know I did. The, 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 the first readings I gave, I disturbed everything. Here I am sitting quietly like a little whatever. And, but when I first read places 15 years ago, I, I had a standard joke. I'd say, whoa, last time I was in front of this many people, I was having sex. You know, that, 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 <laughs> that was, uh, that I thought was the job, you know, to, to shake it up. I wasn't paying attention to, I mean, I think and you have to do that because then you find out the boundaries for yourself, you know. Um, oh, I don't want to write out here or to think out here. I want to exist inward and out, you know, and so. Um, I don't remember what you were talking about, but <laughs> was there was another question in the back. So, <laughs> did you? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you about. Um, you kind of talk about at the beginning of the retreats, like all these truths that we haven't uh, really related to, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like you said, a few of us. Um, but like as a as a writer, as somebody that's, I don't know if you're looking for those or if you're a writer because you just feel those things. And, Regarding your motivations for the communication side of it, I'm just wondering, like, was it for you, like, being a writer about sharing that with other people, or is it about you going out and, like, identifying those, and, like, that's what you want to spend your time doing, and so you do that, and, you know what I mean? Like, how do you balance that relationship, I guess, as, a, as an artist? I don't understand the question. Um, can you say it again? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, is it, is uh, as somebody that, that is like perceiving these truths, maybe that other people aren't, do you feel more motivated by the act of identifying them or oh. the act of sharing them with so, people to also have that experience? So there's like a presumption in there that's like, okay, so as somebody who's tapped into certain truths, do you feel? Well, you seem like somebody that, that enjoys that because that's what you do. And right. I mean, that's part of my question. Is it something that you enjoy doing or is it something that happens to you, I guess? Yeah. I, the, the question is like multifaceted about like truth and do, do I like to share and all that. I'm just repeating it for the internet. But, but the reality is I think I'm just kind of like, I'm just always alone, man. And like I just like I'm afraid of the dark and like I don't want to be alone. And if I'm sharing stuff, it's because I'm like I have this shit going on. And if I don't, you know, if I don't write it, um, I'm dead man walking, you know, like, I don't, I don't know, it just feels like that to me. I don't feel particularly, I mean, with poetry anyway. With the other stuff, I do have, like, purpose. Like, I'm trying to be a writer for a living, and so it's like, I want to write a good book that people will read um, and buy, and, but I also have a lot of things to say related to certain things, like the Kill Jar, it's not just about these murders, but I had a lot to say about Detroit. And I hoped I got it right because I love Detroit. And it's like, I want people to know I love Detroit. And, and then I'm writing this TV show set in Detroit because, yes, I want to like, be a successful writer and make a living so that I can just write because I don't do other things very well. Um, and, and that's true. And, and you know, I, I, so I, I'm trying to get Detroit really right in this TV show and stuff. So I don't, that might be an ego pursuit or it might be a communal pursuit, a community pursuit, I'm not sure. Like, I don't want to be the guy that got it wrong, which is related to ego. <laughs> but I also want to get it right, which is about saying back to my community, hey, I saw you when I was there. Like, I really saw you and I know you see me now, and I don't know, and maybe all of this is a fight against mortality or something, it's another 